And the already spread thin guard force is calling it the worst night of, and I quote, creepy shit they've ever seen on St. Swithin's Day. And that's saying a lot. So if you see any of the few guards trying their darndest to keep things together inside our fair city walls, just go up and give them a hug, because Poe Buddy's nerfect. I'm sorry, there appears to be a typo in that last statement. You're listening to The Morning Crawl, where we won't be playing any of today's top hit music, because we will be keeping all frequencies clear in the event of an emergency broadcast. This is Dodger, signing off alone because all of my animal co-hosts were turned into food rations. Oh no. <laughs> Let's go and read this letter from Dad. Thank you, thank you. I hadn't pressed the button. It's fine. Hi, Sand Wrinkle. I hadn't pressed the button. Let's go and do the um, thing where we, where we read the message from hey, Dad. Hey, a letter arrived from Dad. Dear Lil, I haven't received your last letter yet. I really could have used the pick-me-up. Things are getting really hectic here. Thanks. Everyone is busy getting ready for the upcoming naval battle. Even though I don't have any training at all, I'm getting stationed on one of the attack boats on the front lines. But don't worry. I overheard the Admiral say that there may be a plan brewing to unleash a ferocious sea monster, if they can find one but they'll have to make sure there aren't allies in the water when they do. So that sounds like a plan, right? I don't really know what's in store for me, but Ferocious I'm doing my very monster. best so I can get home and we can finally get our lives back on the right track. Wish me luck. I think I'll need it this time. Love, Dad. I guess all the fighting has disrupted the postal service? Oh, the humanity! Okay. Hi, Gobby! I heard the news. This is your last shift down here at the shed. Yeah, it is. It sure is. I may not always get four stars, but I think I've been pulling my weight around here. Seems pretty weird to pull me off duty, just as everything seems to be at an all-time level of terrible. Speaking of things being terrible, let's make sure you're all stocked up for your shift. Um. I'm not selling that back to him. Or maybe the time's gone when I could have used that. You know what? Never mind. We don't need Are it. Are you fine. sure you've got everything you need? I've got a big walk to the east gate ahead of me. Yep. Um, Are you sure you've yep. got everything? Thanks yep. for everything, Garby. Thanks, Garby. Okay, what do we have? There's messages for Guardsman Lil. Hi, Lil. They're letting me add something to the writ. Isn't that neat? I just wanted to let you know that the Cyclops was the mole and the GLA hasn't be, has been able to successfully do five missions without incident thanks to your help. Have a great last day. I'm sorry I couldn't convince Desi. Um, uh, Desi to keep you on longer. Um, somebody left the door to the food reserves open last night. And the enchanted ice melted away. Looking at you, Randy, we'll need to restock the, with fresh, non-rotten food. So please be on the lookout for that. Middle manager, Mike Melroy. Attention, Randy's friend and colleagues. He is officially exiled from the school. We have confirmed once again that the previous battle was won in large part due to the state of the drafted soldier's equipment. It's your job to turn coal into diamonds. See if there's any way to improve the state of drafted soldiers before signing them up. We've put a call out for mercenaries to assist in our... Um, defences. Small treasury budget has been allocated for this initiative. Try not to overspend the Queendom's money. Um, you'll get the best bang for your buck. It will be reflected in your star ranking. Ash. As a result of the sports, mummies and daddies being turned into cannon fodder. I'm seeing lots of um, vagrant hooliganism it's easy for you to say. From the feral and orphaned youths. Don't be taken in by their rosy cheeks and recently lost baby teeth smiles. Some of them are real stinkers. Malcolm. Okay, cool.
Okay, right. We're just going to fill up. Oh, yeah, cool, 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 brilliant. Great, let's go. Hi, oh, Kelly. Hi. It's me, Kelly. I remember you from the wedding. You hired me to serve the soup to all those bigwigs. Why they wanted Monty's soup at the royal wedding, I have no clue. But, you know, rich people. I've got a wagon full of food for my boss to help with the whole people dying of starvation thing. Okay. I didn't know Monty's was part of the war effort. Oh, yeah, we have been slammed, slammed. in Monty's lately. What with all the food rationing, we're running out of soup. I had to go all the way to the Monty's in Caladar to get supplies. Heck of a trick for a cyclops in heels. <laughs> That's Those really far closer. away. You could have got food from? No. The Monty's in Scarborough was burnt down when the Duchy was sacked, and the only other Monty's is in Fireball Canyon. But their food is all weird and pixelated. So, Caladar it is. What kind of food did you get? I don't know. Stuff for soup? I didn't ask too many questions. They seemed to know what we needed. Anyway, my manager gave me a list. Here, take a look. You hand your list of ingredients. Pretty standard stuff. Most of them are marked perishable. Doesn't perishable mean the food will go bad after a while? Huh. Kelly, it's a food yeah, bag. Ke Kelly, Kelly, it's Kelly, Kelly. Do you mind if we move this along? The food in the wagon is kind of, well, how do I say this delicate like? It's starting to stink, like my boyfriend's son Orlando Jr.'s gym bag after goblin ball practice, if you know what I mean. Kelly, are you trying to bring... Kelly! I don't think food is supposed to stink, though. It's not, but this bunch? Pay you is all I have to say. Kelly, you're not bringing hmm. the... I think that smell means what she's hauling is a risk to people. Yeah, Kelly, you're not gonna kill people with your food. Get get out! Get out, love! Hey kid! I don't gotta take this from you too! I get enough of this kind of treatment from Monty! You wanna deal with this food, then do it! I'm out of here! I don't want the food! This ball is desperate for food, but it's not desperate for dysentery. Good catch, Garfman. Yes! What are you doing here? A blinding rage fills my eyes. It is the gatekeeper who ruined my wedding day. How have you, honorless child, been allowed to keep such an important position? I haven't. I'm being, I'm Thank been fired. Thank the walls of your shed for protecting you from the taste of my blood. If I still had it. Kabla! Despite my blood feud with you, Guardian, it does not please me that the Sprawl has been so brutally punished by the Kingdom of Petrard. Okay. This war has been conducted most dishonorably by those pathetic Petrardians, and your city has been ruined. Much no, in haven't. the same way as you ruined my way. Hey, hey, go, go. I doubt you could even help us if you wanted to. Marvog is no match for the might of the kingdom of Petrard. You are attempting to use tricky reverse psychology against me. I am. It will fail. That's what Prince Phineas said too. He figured you'd be too dumb to understand what it was. He said that? Too dumb, eh? Well, I will destroy the kingdom of Petrard myself. Okay, great. Okay, great, bye. <laughs> By expertly using reverse psychology and turning the fight against them, they became a powerful agent for the spool. Right on! Amazing.
Oh, hello. Hello, Groundwalker. I am Marabella. Hi, Marabella. Hi, I'm Lil. Uh, anything else? I don't know. I've never been above water before. You lead the way. Okay. Hi. Who are you? Okay, what you doing here, Marabella? I have an official message from the leaders of my people. <clears throat> this is an official notice that the Thalassocracy of... The what now? Thalassocracy. It's the word used for an empire that is primarily made up of maritime or seaborne areas. Okay, great. Huh, learned a new word today. Continue. Okay. <clears throat> the Thalassocracy of Bubble Town is committed... Sorry, one more time. Bubble Town. Bubble Town. Uh-huh, that's the name of my Thalassocracy. Bubble Town, got it. On you go. Okay. <clears throat> the Thalassocracy of Bubble Town is committed to the defense of the sprawl. That's the end. Okay, wonderful. That's wonderful news. A new ally in our hour of need? Oh, thank you, good Marabella of Bubble Town, for your message. Are you a warlike people? Well, we don't like it, but we are quite good at it. We used to be a peaceful people skilled more in song and art, but we lost our song many years ago, and now we know only war. Okay. Oh, that's rather sad. Um... I was given the message to deliver to you in this old shell. This shell retains sound. They say it can even hold on to sounds from many years ago, like an archive or time capsule. I've always wondered what other sounds might be hidden in this shell. That's cool. How can you hear what else is inside the shell? That I don't know. I only know how to access Sorry? this message. They say the instruction manual for it was lost many years ago. They say a lot of things, don't they? I've got no reason to not let them in. Do I just truth serum them real quick? X-ray. I kind of wanted to X-ray the shell, but that's fine. It's my shell, the one that captures... Yeah, it's useless. I can't let me in. All right, Marabella, strap on your boots. Boots. Fishtail covering. You're drafted. Amazing. The Mer people of Bubble Town would be honored to help the Sprawl in their fight. We will strike at the enemy with everything we've got. And we strap on war fins for future reference. Okay, duly noted. Thank you. Okay. Oh, my microphone's falling down. <laughs> this is the place. Wonder what I the decoder ring would have said I'm about the show. I don't know. Where's Baby Yoda? Where's Baby Yoda? Where's Baby Your Yoda? Move, kid. Where's Baby Yoda? I would like to see the baby. Okay, what's your deal? <laughs> the deal is simple, kid. You let me in, and I will jumpstart your city's defenses and give your leadership precious information about your enemies. Okay. Oh, cool. Not so fast. You don't let me in. I'm taking the same info about the sprawl and selling it to the highest bidder. Okay, come on in. Not so fast. It'll cost you. How much? How much? Well, that's up for negotiation. Okay. You tell me how much it's worth. All right. 1,000 gold. Oh, we can definitely do better than that. Want to play hardball, do you? Okay, fine. 500 gold. That was quick. 
Thank you for lowering the price. Yeah, don't mention it. Okay. No, really, it means a lot. I don't want to act for everything. I said everything. don't mention it. Because he's... If people hear about this, I'll never make full price again. Okay, okay. My lips are sealed. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Go. Go into this wall. We won't talk again. It's fine, mate. It's absolutely fine. I'll assist your city with its defenses and provide enemy intel for the agreed upon price of 500 gold. Sweet. Here, take this contract to the castle. They'll settle up with you. Good, I'm glad I'm A not expected to do it. pleasure doing business with you, kid. Cool. Haha! -ha! The Bangalorean? The Bangalorean will aid in the defense of the spool and you got him for as low as possible price. Amazing. Charm to make your acquaintance, young gatebinder. We've met. I am Gary Dolt, son of B and Brian Dolt, and I wish to pass. Will you require anything else? Geary, it's me, Lil, remember? Magnus the Magnificent? Of course. Pleasure to see you again, Lil. Now let me pass. I'm off to a meeting at the Mages Guild. Okay. I don't know why you're the me heard, Mages but I'm Guild, well man. I'm on my way to becoming a full-fledged mage, a card-carrying member of the guild. Heading in right now to meet with my tutor, Master Tyronius Athanatos. He's not much for having a laugh, but I've learned so much from him. Tyronius? That guy's a horse's ass. Pardon my goblin. <laughs> How dare you speak that way about the master? If Tyronius were here, you'd be sorry, you miserable smag. Well, suffice to say, you'd be sorry. Oh, no, we're not letting that lie. My magical skills have flourished exponentially ever since my precious birthday present. Julian, that sweet sma <clears throat> simpleton, gave me this. Um, I added the pure, unrefined power crystal to my wand, and now I can truly feel the magic coursing through my veins. Yeah, no, you're not having that back. My wand! My power crystal! You tricked us into giving it to you! The tricksy little gate guard stole it from us! Our power! Our present! You seem really precious about it. Ah! I, just, I just created Gollum! Oh no! Oh no! You took away this darker, more powerful version of Gary the Goblin's new toy. He was getting too precious about it anyway. Just give him a ring to make up for it. Sounds right. Hello. Avast, Petey. Thar blows a fine, upstanding guardsman. Eh? Upstanding guardsman. Eh? We'll take our ship and blast our way through whatever scurvy barnacles are attacking the sprawl's waterways. Yar. Yar. So you're saying you'd like to be drafted? Aye, aye. That's a much more concise way to say it. Yar. Hi. Ahoy there, landlubber. The name's Captain Jane Pigeon, and this here's me fine feathered matey Pete. Though yous can call him Petey if you're an old sea dog like me. Yar har har. Eh? Old sea dog, eh? <laughs> wow, a real life pirate. You want to defend the sprawl from incoming attackers? Aye, I've heard tell there's plenty of doubloons and booty to be had by sending some enemies down to Davy Jones's locker. I'm not sure I understood all of that, but still, wow! What if she wants to kill the, 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 the fish people? This pirate persona is really hard to keep up. And when the parents come to the ship with their kids for the birthday parties, 
Sometimes I look in the mirror and I don't know who is looking back at me. Oh, me. Eh? Existential crisis, eh? That's exactly what it is, Peter. An existential crisis. Eh? Having one too, eh? Oh no, she's not a real pirate. I'm captain of a ship called the Fermenter. Kind of a play on words there. We actually operate primarily as a brewery. We transport our beer on the ship and sell it to markets via an interconnected series of waterways. Surprisingly economical to take the beer to the customers rather than have them come to us. Eh? Surprisingly economical, eh? Okay. I'm so relieved to hear that. I thought you were like a pirate, pirate, you know, plunder and booty and all that. I don't think I'm going to let her fight. I mean, we know our way around booty. I'm going to pretend you didn't just say that. Cool. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to let her fight. I don't think it's a good idea. Oh, gosh. This is really going to hurt morale back at the ship. People were so excited to serve their queen and country. Oh, well. Best of luck to you. Come on, Peter. Back to the ship we go. Yar. Eh? Wallow in pity. Eh? I just don't think they're gonna, it's, I don't think it's going to be a good. It'd be good for them, you know. <coughs> Hello, I'm here to join my family in the refugee camp at the docks. <coughs> oh, this, this is the teen, tiny Tim. Hi, tiny Tim. What's your name, little buddy? My name's Teeny Tom McGoblin. Okay. On account of why I'm so teeny, and my last name's McGoblin. Me dad and mum and sisters already came through the gates. I was lagging behind on account of me bum leg. Ah, what happened to your leg? It fell off. Aren't limbs supposed to, you know, stay attached? That delivery was perfect. I'm too poor to have limbs that stay attached. You fell off. I know your dad. He's Seamus McGoblin, right? The artist. Him an artist? No, Mum. He has a real job. He's a painter. He paints things. Oh, my gosh. I've got no reason if to I use any of my equipment. Here, how do I know you're not going to terrorize the neighborhood, huh? Maybe uh, break a few hearts while you're at it? The only thing I'm worried about breaking is another of me tooths. It's hard not to, though, when you've been eating rocks all day. Why are you eating rocks? Oh my rocks? god, don't you have any real food? Why are you eating I do. rocks? I just eat rocks for fun. Have you ever tried throwing the rocks? I'm too poor for throwing rocks. Oh, buddy! Well, uh, try not to have too much fun. I can't, on account of me cholera. Tell me, boy, what day is today? Today? Why, it's the day after St. Swithin's Day. Oh, my God! <laughs> Do you know the poultry shop in the sprawl at the corner? <laughs> I should hope I do. Go and buy the prize turkey that was hanging in the window. Oh what? God. The one as big as me? This game is a gift. Sure, go and buy it. Go and tell them to bring it here that I may tell them to deliver to the docks to feed your wonderful family. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. It's a shilling? What's a shilling? <laughs> It's gold. <laughs> Go on now. Yes, Mum. Thanks for this. You're one of the good ones. Charles Goblin Dickens and Teeny Tom, who did not die, rushed home to the family at the docks with the prize turkey they couldn't afford. Oh my god. Flip me off, me young lad! Um, hi. Is this where to sign up for the draft? Hello. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Hello. Oh, I need to talk to you. Or do... What? 
Would you like to be drafted to fight in the war? Oh no, it's not for me. It's for him. For my fish. For who? My pet fish, Dennis. Dennis looks white. Does Dennis want to fight? Look at Dennis. Dennis he definitely wants to, wants to fight, fight. All right, and he is very good at it. I promise you. What can we do? Should we true serum? Dennis here has gone 28 and 0 in the admittedly immoral and illegal underground fish fights that happened down at the docks. Or at least they used to before they set up that refugee camp. He's undefeated and shows no signs of slowing down. I mean... Do we x-ray the fish? Will he eat the mare people? Well, let's x-ray the fish. Watch the fish have a gun. What am I looking at? Whoa, look at that bone structure. Yeah, not a lot of sea creatures even have bones, but Dennis here, he's built like a brick house. I have no idea what that means. See, a house is where you live, and uh, don't explain it. Okay, I'm gonna let him in. <laughs> Scary brick shells, fish. Let's go. Okay, here's your paperwork. Welcome to the war effort. Not me, remember? It's for the fish. Got it. The fish is in. The fish isn't gonna care who it eats. Oh no, it's going to eat our side. Perfect score! I'm going to get an achievement! Amazing! Fish is going to eat all the other fish. Shit. Do I have anywhere else to go? Okay, just a tavern. You should see the look on your dumb face. She looked like she was this close to peeing her pants. Nuh -uh. Nuh uh Well, the surprise isn't even the surprise, Princess Pee Pants. Wait till you see. Oh, Shh, please tell me it's that spoil back. it. Okay, okay. Congrats on not having a job anymore. We're glad to have you back. Finally. Yeah. Hey Arda, mind if I write a quick letter to my dad? Uh, yeah, maybe later though, okay? Maybe later? No, I have to send him one now. It's my dad It time. can wait, enjoy your party. And your surprise is over there by the fire. But first, I know you're just a kid, but I'll mix you up any drink you'd like on the house to celebrate everything you've been doing around here. What'll it be? Coming right up. Busy, please. I'm 12. I'm sure between my job at the city council and as an administrator with the Guard Corps, if the sprawl was on the verge of catastrophic collapse from within and without, Mike Melroy would know about it. I may be baked out of my gourd, as per usual, but I'm telling you, I'm seeing bad omens everywhere. Something very bad is about to go down. Holy oh, Lil, congratulations. What a party. Are you having a good time? No. 
Um, no. Honestly, not really. But I'm trying to feel the love echo. What's a love echo? I'm gonna miss this. I'm here to collect your badge and your gun. What badge and gun? No one gave you a badge and a gun? How the hell did you navigate your way through 11 levels without your badge and your gun? There are plenty of ways to solve a problem without a gun. But the badge, Lil, it's all in the badge. This game. I'm gonna miss this too. This game was special. This game was real. Oh, look at the banner. Oh, please be dad. Magic lovers of the sprawl, please put your hands together for the one, the only, the Edward, the great magician, Alakazoo, Alakazee. Okay, wait, I need to speak to Edward, I guess. Hi. By the beard of Bertram Bartleby the Bloated, I appear! Edward, the official officiant! It's THE Edward, THE Great Magician again! Come out of retirement to play one more preteen birthday party! How old are you today, little girl? Still twelve. I actually picked up a few tricks from a true blue real deal mage I met. Lil. I am small but nimble, with a bushy tail. In trees I scamper, never to fail. I gather my food and store it with care. Do you know what animal I am? Do you dare? Squirrel. That's right! A sparrow! Ta-da! What? Sparrows don't have bushy tails. And since when do they scamper through trees? When they're not flying, of course. Yeah, okay, you got me there, the Edward. Do you have time for another? Oh. Okay, okay, here we go. I'm small and petite, with feathers so fine. I sing sweet melodies, a sound so divine. This is a sparrow. I flit and flutter through the air with ease, and build my home high up in the trees. It's a bird. Who am I? Can you guess my name? I'm a little bird that's known for its fame. It's another sparrow. That's right! It's another sparrow! <laughs> Ta-da! Okay, this time it actually made sense. Made sense and amazed you! Honestly, that was pretty great. Thanks for being at my party, the Edward. I'm gonna miss you. There she is, my little guardsman. Oh, Dad? What are you doing here? Oh, I missed you so much. What is going on? You stopped writing letters. I, I got worried something had happened to you. What could happen to me? I wasn't the one off fighting a war, remember? Yeah, but you get some pretty tough customers coming through that gate. Sometimes if you try to whip them, or even just talk to them in the wrong way, it's game over. I got worried. So they let you leave the war because you were worried about your daughter? I mean, shouldn't you be fighting in an epic naval battle right about now? No, they didn't. And yes, I should be. But I couldn't stand being at war for a second longer. I was actually pretty instrumental in winning a couple of battles out there. I did some amazing things for a chubby middle-aged guy. I think all because I was thinking about you and wanting to keep you safe. I'm so tired, Dad. It's been really hard without you. I know it has been, Lil. And I know I've said it before, but I came back to make things right. I'm glad you didn't die. I'm glad I didn't die, too. I could die any day now. This isn't about you, Mrs. Abernathy. All right, Seamus. I'll be hey, up to Mitch. tuck you in soon. We can figure out what the rest of our lives will look like in the morning. Oh, my entire heart. Look at this fantastic hat. This hat 
It is not as fantastic as my previous My hat. guy. What? Really? Because I have to say that's a pretty fantastic hat. You should have seen my previous hat. I, my journey, it continues. There's no pleasing some people. I do hope you'll tell your father how good of a babysitter I've been while he's been away. Oh. You were supposed to be looking after me? I dressed you, I bathed you, I cooked you three square meals a day. I've been here, alone, this whole time. Then tell me this. Who have I been bathing, Lil? Who? Take your meds, Mrs. Abernathy. Without the arrival of the workman carrying ingredients, Monty's home of the soup was in a real predicament. Just like he did during the great bowl shortage of O2, Monty was going to have to improvise. Throwing eggshells, wood shavings and anything else that seems remotely edible into a pot, Monty created the new signature menu item, the Slim Pickin' Stew. Everyone who ate it experienced intense gastrointestinal pain and explosive diarrhea. At the restaurant, it took a substantial bribe to the health inspector and a very large mop to clean up the mess. Kelly put in a two weeks notice and started looking for another job. She was tired of being indirectly responsible for poisoning so many people. Prieta Cargan was insulted to hear that Prince Phineas thought that she was too dumb to know what reverse psychology was. How dare he think something like that, she thought. She was going to have to think of a way to make good on her vow to defeat Petrard once and for all. But how exactly was she going to destroy the entire kingdom of Petrard? She started thinking that this was going to be tough. Maybe too tough. She probably shouldn't even try to do it. But maybe that's why she should do it, to prove that it could be done. And she was the only one brave enough to do it. But if she could be brave enough, anyone could, right? Maybe. Months of talking herself into and subsequently back out of doing battle with Petrard eventually drew the drove the prayer to mad. Her people staged a coup and demanded a special ballet that would remove her as their leader. But maybe she should do the exact opposite of what she wa what they wanted, she thought. Maybe. Bangal Bangalorean. The intelligence gained from the Mangalorean led to the evacuation of an outlying farming village before the enemy could attack, saving dozens of lives. A win for the sprawl in a season of losses. Using the money raised for providing this intel, the Bangalorean was able to commission the design of a personal jetpack. His budget was a mere 500 gold, so it was an absolute hack job when it immediately exploded, severely burning his face. Thank goodness for the helmet he already possessed. Without the pure, unrefined power crystal from Julian to increase his magical might, it didn't take long for Gary to fall out of favour with, or even the awareness of, the Dark Mages. According to his former mentor Tyronius, Gary was just not Freedom Caucus material anymore. After being unceremoniously dumped by the Dark Mages, Gary went back to his work with Julian at the GLA. It took quite a bit of work to deprogram Gary, but with tenacity and a bit of luck, Cole the Troll finally got through to him and shattered Tyronius' hold. However, to this day, Gary catches himself losing time and drifting off when the light hits the power crystal just right, reminding him of the dreams of power and fire he once had during his time with the mages. Following Lin Lil's pronouncement, Teeny Tom eagerly limped all the way to the poultry shop and told the butcher about delivering the prized turkey. He then hobbled in the direction of the docks to meet his family and share the good news. The turkey arrived plump and juicy, just as Lil said it would. There was, unfortunately, the matter of the bill. You see, Lil and Tom never actually talked about who would be paying for the bird. And by the time this oversight had been identified by the butcher's delivery person, the entire McGoblin family had de devoured it, trimmings and all. This put the butcher in an awkward position. He knew the Mogoblins didn't have the money to pay. And I mean, what can you get from the guy who hasn't got anything? Turns out you can get a lot if you send him the right way. 
the already impoverished Magoblins were forced to gear up their tent, the only means of keeping the rain and salty spray spray off their goblin heads. All because of Lil's selfish impulse to reenact the ending of a timeless Dokenzian novella. I just killed a goblin family! Okay. Not enough! Fuck! Should have done all of them. Not like he didn't have cholera anyway. Mirabella returned to her home in Bubble Town with the message, we swim to battle. The fierce but uninspired tribe of Mer people moved songlessly into the fray and failed to instill any terror in the enemy. The pirates of the good ship for Manta sailed away from the battle, singing the shanties and brewing a new beer, a tasty porter called the Chocolate Deserter. Dennis, the seven-time all-fish fighting champion, was released into Spool Harbour with a loud plop. As he had done all his life, he attacked the first thing he saw with all the ferocity a thoroughbred, sarcastic, fringe-head could muster. Unfortunately, the first thing in Dennis's past were the other drafted forces. By the time the enemy arrived in the harbour, Dennis was fast asleep in the empty harbour with a full belly and a sense of accomplishment. Shit! Morning came and the waters of Spool Harbour finally calmed. The enemy ships had left the harbour, but not before laying... Yeah, laying waste to the docks and the encampment that had swung up there. War had caught up with the refugees once again. There were no survivors. Shit. The destruction of the docks will have a massive impact not only on the school's military forces, but its an ability to receive essential supplies and food. A red sky shone brightly that morning, an ominous portent of doom. Shit. <laughs> <laughs>